Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode. I am Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We come here every week on Tuesdays. Uh, Taco Tuesday, if you want to remember it like that. Uh, I don't always eat tacos on Tuesday, but I do sometimes. Uh, but anyway, that's just a way you could remember it. Taco Tuesday with Tim, and we talk about golf carts. Let me check and make sure that we're up and running. Looks like my internet is doing good. Facebook is rolling. Oh, it's kind of freezing on Facebook though. We'll see if that'll clear up here in a minute. Okay. Big Mike, what's going on? Big Mike, 45 and sunny in Northwest Indiana. Gene Hansen, 35, cloudy in Michigan. What's up, Gene? Mike Camp, Blanchard, Oklahoma. I would assume that's what you, what you are saying there. Kurt, what's going on, Kurt? Long time no see, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Greg, feeling better. Thank, yeah, Greg, I was wondering about you. I'm glad you're feeling better. Uh, appreciate you stopping in, man. Rich Eastman, 44 and sunny and Machapongo. I, don't, I like saying Machapongo. <laughs> uh, John Shearer, what's going on? John, good afternoon. Helpless, hi all, 51 and Cabot. Your Eclipse headquarters. You ain't lying. They, they, they've been saying, uh, see, where, where Helpless is located and where I'm located, we're right in the path of that eclipse, you know, in a couple of weeks. And they are predicting a record number of people that are going to show up in, you know, the, in this area. So it's going to be very interesting. I'm going to go out on the lake and watch it. Uh, Galactic Technologies, ooh, another episode, always a good show. Thank you, sir. Ricky Smith, hey, Tim, and all the gearheads. What's up, Ricky? MJ Dunn, afternoon. Clay Mathis, just checking in. What's up, Clay? Jerry Kelly from Madisonville, Texas. What's going on, Jerry? Larry Consley, 40, in southern Indiana. William Moore on Facebook. Kevin, what's going on, Kevin, on Facebook? Kevin Salyer. Robert Cedar, they're closing school for the eclipse uh, where he's located. Uh, there might be some of that here too. I don't know. They're talking about closing. Uh, they're talking about putting police at certain places and closing once they get a certain number of cars. You know, because we have no idea. You know how many cars we're talking in 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 my area. Get a day in the '60s and then this morning. That's Jeffrey. What's up, Jeffrey? 30s in the AM, yeah. Yeah, we got our, this is a time of year where we have our thermometer, or our thermostat. My wife's got it set for dual zones, like she's, it's, it's automatic, because in the morning time we got heat running, in the, in the afternoon the air conditioner comes on, but the thermometer, the thermostat is automatic now, and it can, it can do all that adjusting. So we got that crazy stuff going on with our thermostat. Oh, by the way, everybody, y'all showed up on a good day. I don't know if you know that or not. We're giving away a hat today. We are giving away a hat. So everybody that is typed already is entered in the hat giveaway. We will announce the winner at the end of the, uh, end of the episode. My wife is actually out of town, but she is watching right now, and she is helping me with the names and, t and uh, in the random number generator. And everything that it takes today is swag day, MJ Dunn. It is swag day. Let me see where we're at here. Chevy Man, you are entered. Everybody that has typed is entered. So if, you, if you're watching and you want to have a chance at the hat, then uh, go ahead and make sure you type something in the, in the chat, either on Facebook or YouTube. It doesn't matter. Uh, my assistant executive producer is watching both of them. Brian Cochran, good morning from Iowa. David Irwin. What's up, David Irwin and Brian Cochran? Larry Hitz. Winner, winner. D, D Max, what's going on? Yeah, still only one time winners right now, Jeffrey. And uh, she knows all that. My wife's name is Catherine, by the way, if anybody wants to give Catherine a shout out. She's in the, she's behind the scenes helping me from Texas right now. Hi, Tim. Charles from Georgia. What's going on, Charles Ferguson? John Roth. What's going on, John Roth? 
This is Tuesday the 19th. We are live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time right now. So if you're watching me on Tuesday the 19th at 12 noon Central Time, you're watching us live. So anything could happen. <laughs> Let me run the social media links. If you'd like to follow us on any of the other platforms, you're welcome to. Please follow us on Facebook and YouTube and give us a like and a subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, all of that stuff helps the, al the algorithm. Uh, that we're always trying to manipulate and make sure that we are, have a strong internet presence. And we apparently we do with the amount of subscribers that we have. Here's those social media links, other ones besides YouTube and Facebook. It's, Insta, it's uh, TikTok and Instagram. Run those. Okay. Big Mike, Catherine keeping my internet strong. Yeah, that's true, she does. She works for an uh, internet company is where, where all you guys from Indiana are from. She works for SURF. John Roth uh, here from St. Louis. What's going on, John Roth? Mason Grove checking in. What's up, Mason? What a cat to hide the grease. That's why I asked you if you had a black hat to hide the grief. Yeah, what this is about the darkest color we have is the one I have on. It's, it's dark blue. Craig, what's make what's shaking? Swag day, good one. Good look, everyone. Gary England, almost forgot about today, but here I am. Gary, what you, if you'd have forgot about today, you wouldn't have had a chance to win the swag bag we're gonna give away today, Gary. But you're you made it, you're in. You gotta stick around to the end to, to we get a winner announced. Uh, Jeffrey is with a C. Kevin says he just switched to surf last week. <laughs> DJ Dizzy Jeff, what's going on? DJ Dizzy Jeff from Kentucky. Dennis from San Elmo. Dennis Dean. Good afternoon, Mr. Tim. What's up, DJ? They're closing school. Yep, everybody over here on Facebook, you are all entered. You're going to have to stick around, though, because we're not going to announce the winner until the end. Uh, Craig, hey, John, I'm from Godfrey, Illinois. Welcome. I have that caller. Gary England says. David Irwin, uh, thank you, David. Hate to do this, but I still haven't gotten an email to return those leaf springs. Who should I email to find out how to do that? Just, uh, I tell you what, Mike, I'm sure that I can check on that for you in a, in a little bit, but the, the, the girl's name that told me that, that was going to help you with that, her name is Maddie, M-A-D-D-I-E, and if you'll send an email to, to the support, you know, that support email that's on the home page of Golf Cart Garage, there's, a, there's an email address for support, send that and say, uh, please get Maddie to send me an update on what the... Uh, what the situation is with my return, and and I can assure you she'll get back with you, and I'll and I'll ask her about it too. Don't forget to hit the like button. David Irwin says thank you, David. Okay, let's get started with the regular questions. This is from Stephen. request form. Uh, Big Mike, D uh, Dave just posted a link there for return request form if you want to do it that way too. You're hard work and keeping Tim online and inline. <laughs> yes, she does, Kurt. Uh, well, there's a couple of people behind the scenes. My wife is one of them, but my, I think I've mentioned Iman several times. Give a shout out to Iman. He helps me, he helps me uh, stay online also. He helps me a bunch. My cart just quits on its own. This is from Steven. You play with the forward and reverse and the speed sensor, and after a bit it goes normal for a while, then it stops again. Any thoughts? That's my wife's company over there, the Freeman Strategy Group. 
<laughs> she says, don't believe it when he says he's starving. <laughs> uh, Stephen, uh, this is what I would do in your situation. If you, it could just be a coincidence that you're playing with the forward and reverse switch and, and the speed sensor, and then after a while it goes to normal. So what I'd like for you to do is don't do any of that and just wait that, wait that amount of time and see if the cart takes off and starts running again. And also check for heat. Uh, I, that's the first thing that I would want to be checking for is heat in your situation because it, uh, it sounds like something could be getting hot and then shutting down. Hello, uh, William Rizzo. What's going on, William? Do we post questions in the chat or in the comments? John Roth. Uh, in the, well, it, on my screen it says chat is where you'd post the questions. Helpless Garage, thank you, Iman. Yeah, Iman is a big part of this. Joe Foster, what's going on, Joe Foster? I switched to uh, Robert Cedar. Happy first day of spring. Too bad we had frost last night in South Carolina. Yeah, we still got, uh, my grass is green. You know, my front yard is green, but it's cold outside. So it's, uh, it's, it's, that, it's that crazy time of year. Sunny in 62 in Prentice, Mississippi. Ricky Hall, Prentice. I want to say I've been there, Ricky. Is that anywhere close to a, what is that? I can't think of it right now. Uh, Frame of Strategy Group, Catherine. Where, seminary, is that anywhere close to a seminary, Ricky Hall? Just curious. Uh, chat for the live stream, William Rizzo says. Chat, Jeff, yep. It's 75 degrees here, William Rizzo. I send the keys. Cold front came through last night. Yeah, that's really cold, uh, William. <laughs> uh, number two. I'll try to hurry up so we can have plenty of time for the giveaway. I have a PowerWise charger that I was trying to trigger with the cart present to back voltage the controller board, which got wet. A customer brought it to me. I suspect the board to be damaged, but hope to verify it before ordering a new board. I am assuming that if I apply something like 28 volts to the red and black wires, the relay should trigger the charger to start. Jumping the relay does allow the charger to work. You're exactly right, Steve. That is exactly what I used to have to do for certain racing applications. I would have to jump the relay in a power wise charger in order to make it come on uh, because of something crazy I was trying to do with the race car. But yeah, that is exactly what I would do and you were on the right track. Very likely that the board is gone if it got wet too. Uh, Harry Fike, years ago PDS, have you ever seen the resistor on the solenoid get so hot it melted into the case of the controller? And what would cause it to get that hot? The only thing I can think of, Harry, would be the, uh, the controller itself. Because that's, that's a pre-charged resistor for the controller. And if it's getting that hot, that means there's some kind of blockage, you know, because voltage is going through there all the time because it's connected across those two big posts those two big posts go straight to the battery positive. So if that resistor is getting hot, there's a blockage somewhere in that controller that, that's causing that to happen. John Roth, 2000 Eastgo TXT series have upgraded to a Plum Quick Bandit. It's got a three inch lift, all-terrain tires, and brand new battery. That's only increased my speed about three miles an hour. Three inch lift. Uh, new controller. Okay. Well, yeah, a new controller. Sh a, sh a new controller should probably be should probably be done even before the Plum Quick Bandit. But the the just the Bandit itself should have increased you at least three miles an hour. I would have thought. So if you've got some other bottleneck now, it's going to be the controller. I always like to tell people to do the controller first and then the Bandit. So yeah, that's the next thing I would do would be controller and a solenoid.
Lithium definitely helps. It's masking out around 15 on flat ground. Yeah, I would think that you would be able to achieve that with just the bandit, uh, 15 on flat ground. But I would try a controller first, and if not, if not then tell uh, Robbie at Plum Quick, you know, your situation and see what he comes up with on that bandit. Robert Edwards, hello from West Virginia, 43, and Sonny. Thank you for stopping in, Robert Edwards. Ricky Hall says, 27 miles to seminary. Yeah, I thought I had been through Prentice. Uh, I went to a wedding in seminary. One of my friends lived there. That's, that's Quincy. It's a small world, isn't it? I, I, I recognize that Prentice, Mississippi uh, name. So I guarantee you I've been through there. Dripping or pressure washing? And Sonny, Robert Edward, okay. Where are we at over here? We are on number three. I can't be, there we are. This is from Bill. I have a Summit 2 charger. Over the winter, my batteries went dead. I charged each one separately. Each battery is 11.5. When I plugged the charger in, only the blue light was lit. What did I do wrong? Uh, Check your voltage at, I understand that you say that each battery has 11.5. Check your voltage at the plug that you're plugging into. Like you should have full battery pack voltage at that plug. You need to see what that Summit 2 is seeing when it gets plugged in. So the only way to do that is put your voltmeter leads in the charging receptacle on your cart and see what you're getting right there. Because that's what the Summit 2 is seeing when, it, when, you, when you plug it in. MJ, can you pressure wash in the battery compartment? I don't, I don't think I would pressure wash in the battery compartment with, every, with a, the controller and everything in there, especially if it's not an aftermarket controller because the stock controllers are definitely not waterproof. Uh, I would just use regular pressure in the, in the battery compartment. Use a mixture of baking soda and water to clean any acid debris and just be real careful about the direction you spray in. Uh, getting things a little damp in there if they're under cover is not going to be that big a deal, but pressure washer, that, that, that's a little tough to be under the seat with, I think. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. Number four is where I was at. This is from Scott. Hi, Tim. I'd like to know what, if anything, can be done to stabilize a cart that has a six inch lift and heavy duty rear springs, heavy duty shocks, sway bar, thanks in advance. From Scott. Usually when someone uh, asks me this question, Scott, they're talking about a Yamaha, usually. So, but you didn't tell me, so I'm, I'm not going to assume you're talking about a Yamaha, but if you are, then heavy duty springs, you know, in the rear is about all you can do. You, but the, it's coilover springs in the rear of a Yamaha. And when you lift them, especially six inches, they do tend to get top heavy and they sway really easily. So it should be recommended with any lift kit for a Yamaha with coilover springs, the heavy duty springs should really actually come with the lift kit, honestly, because everybody complains about that when they lift one up too high, uh, or a little too high for their spring setup. So Yamaha's the only one that does the coilovers in the rear. They don't have the heavy duty leaf spring like that. So, but as far as if you're is, if it's another car you're talking about, easy go or a club car, then as many leaf heavy duty springs that you can, that you can get, and probably that'd probably be a four leaf. There's a heavy duty spring that's a four leaf. That's gonna be about as stiff as you can make that rear end. So that would be about all you could do if it was if it's one of the other brands. Bruce, what's going on from Westfield, Wisconsin? One man winner going to make his presence known this week. Bruce, I'm going to feature your uh, pictures that you sent me. I got them. I got them in OBS today. I'm, we're going to show them in a little bit. So thank you for sending me those pictures. Uh, Easy Mike, good, good you made it there. Easy Mike.
Yeah, you power washing, like Jeffrey said, it's going to sling acid and everything all over the place. You don't want that. You don't want that acid to get all over your wires and everything. So that's why I said I just use normal water pressure and be careful about the direction that, that, of flow of the water. I don't, I don't like to, to hit the motor directly, even though it'd probably be okay, but I don't like to hit the motor directly with water. I don't hit, hit the controller area directly with water. I try to keep water concentrated on the batteries themselves, on the tops of the batteries, you know, to try to rinse all that stuff down. Wheel spacers, Craig says, you could use to widen the stance of a, of a top heavy car, but that's not, it's really not going to stop it from swaying back and forth. You know, I'm not sure what exactly what the specifics are on the complaint, but uh, yeah, wheel spacers would widen the stance. Okay. Heavy duty shock and spring number, number five. This is from Teddy. I'm outfitting my 2014 EasyGo TXT with, with lithium and an onboard charger. My question is, the charging receptacle has a blue wire that changed to orange with a red stripe that goes to the controller. I'm replacing the receptacle with a standard 110. Does that blue wire to the controller do a necessary chore or do I just leave it off? Thanks for your help. Well, Teddy, I can answer your question here, but I don't know if you're going to get it or not. But if, in, in case you are watching or in case you do, yes, you got to do something with that blue wire. Uh, you, there, are, there are many, uh, here recently I've discovered there are many YouTube videos on installation of the lithium batteries in, in 48 volt TXTs, which I'm assuming that's what you got. And they, and they tell you exactly what to do with that blue wire. The, what, you what you have to do is you end up having to cut it and you have to end up having to run that to the positive post of your lithium battery or your, cough, or your golf cart's not gonna run. That goes to the positive post of your lithium battery. So you're gonna cut it off right there at the receptacle. You're gonna put some kind of end on that wire and then run it to the positive post. But don't just take my word for it. Go watch the video. There are videos with step-by-step -step instructions on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in the search bar, EasyGo TXT lithium install, and there will be a video that shows you that. John Ross says he's used the wheel spacers. It definitely helped. <clears throat> Number six. This is from Joseph. I'd like to know if lithium batteries are safe for golf carts that are exposed to various temperatures, 15 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year. And carts that are exposed to these elements, meaning not stored inside, are under cover. Well, yeah, statistically, yeah, they're, they're very safe because there's lots of lithium in Florida. There's lots of golf carts in, in the villages, Florida, and they have temperature swings up into the hundreds all the time. So yes, they're safe for golf carts. I mean, there's been a lot of improvements, you know, before they flooded the market. And now there's lots of golf cart lithium combinations out there, lithium manufacturers out there for golf carts. So uh, I have not heard, I'm sure that it's happened, but there, there's, there have been things that have happened with lead acid. There have been people's lead acid cars that burn their house down, you know, because it, it caught on fire in their garage. So I'm sure there's probably things that have happened, but that, not very many, or they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't make still making them. I mean, they they still make lead acid too. Just do my advice on lithium would be just do what the manufacturer says, since we're talking about something that's so expensive. Just do what they say, just so you make sure that you don't have a warranty issue, or if a warranty issue does come up that they're not going to deny your, your warranty claim because of something you did wrong. So just make sure you understand how you're supposed to charge it, what charger you're supposed to use. Just do what they say and you'll be fine. Number seven. This is from Les. I have a 48 volt EasyGo TXT. I let the batteries die and had to charge individually with a 12 volt car charger to get the voltage up to where my Delta cart charger would take over. 
Now my charger will not stop charging on its own and will not cut off. I borrowed a charger and it does the same thing. All batteries are over eight volts with a multimeter and I have 53.8 as a group reading. Well, that's gonna be right off the charger, you have 53.8. My question is, is it possible to have some bad batteries or do I feel it might be the charger even though both did the same thing? Any suggestions? Would Less, I would say that it is very possible that you have a bad battery that's causing that issue. That, that's at least one bad cell or something because what that charger is looking for to shut off, it's looking for uh, no change in voltage for a certain period of time. And then it thinks it's, your golf cart's fully charged and then it'll shut off. Well, if it's not shutting off, you've got one battery that's going up and down, going all over the place. You might ought to uh, put, your, put a voltmeter on it while they're charging, put on each battery, and see if you can see one that might be fluctuating because that could be confusing your, your charger. But yeah, it's very possible that it's a bad battery. Uh, Roger, I have an EasyGo workhorse. If I drive it for a distance or use it for a long time, it will foul the plugs, skips, and motor quits. What could be wrong with it? It has a 2003 Robin 350. It would, if it's fouling the plugs, you got to, you, well, you're either running, you're either running way too rich, or could you possibly get in some. Uh, you got any oil or anything showing up in places that it's not supposed to, or do you got gasoline showing up in your crankcase where it's not supposed to? That would be some questions that I would have, you know, to try to, to, to narrow it down. William says that lithium iron phosphate is safer than lithium ion, uh, LiPo4. One of the carts we sell, the company sends wheel spacers for the lifted carts just in the rear of the cart. Fire problems with the electric skateboards. Oh, really? While charging. I'd like to have one of those skateboards, those electric skateboards. I'd probably hurt myself. Uh, Bob Wiltfong, just wanted to say thanks again for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Being a newbie, the golf cart well is much appreciated. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for saying that. Jimmy Stokely, hello from uh, Tennessee. Sunny in 46. Ricky Hall, hey Tim, I've always had trouble finding the show on YouTube. I thought if you clicked on any video during the show time, you would get the live show. What's the easiest way to get it on YouTube? The easiest way that I know of, Ricky, is just to subscribe like to the, to the channel. And then I believe when I hit the timer, people, I mean, y'all, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, cause I'm on the, I'm on the opposite end. When I hit the timer, don't you automatically get a notification and then you just click on that notification and it brings you straight to the live. Isn't that, isn't that the way that it works? Y'all tell me, cause I'm not sure. Uh, Easy Mike says, yes, I have the same problem now with one of my big battery brand batteries and the customer service is terrible. Oh, no oil in crankcase, no oil in gas. Pressure on cylinders is correct, Roger says. Well, if that's the case, if, you, if it's not because of some foreign fuel, like and what I mean by foreign fuel is that you get something else that on that spark plug besides gasoline, you know, sometimes oil can get in there, sometimes uh, uh, gasoline can leak past and get in your crankcase and it can cause all kinds of problems. Uh, then the only thing I could think of is that you're running really rich for some reason in your carburetor. Uh, it might, might, uh, might could stand the carburetor clean or something. This, maybe something in there is causing it to run rich. Okay. Gary England says that's how it works for him. Okay, so you just have to subscribe and then you'll get a notification and you just click on the notification. Oh, William says YouTube is kind of fickle. Yeah, well, you notice like a couple of weeks ago, YouTube went out. My wife's over there replying to uh, Ricky. Subscribe and you'll get notified if your phone computer is set up for notifications from YouTube. 
Uh, I'm not sure what she said there. Jeffrey says, check the tip of the needle of the car. Notification from YouTube. All right. That's how it's supposed to work. MJ Dunn says, run non-ethanol gas. That'd probably be a good idea for all golf carts, actually. Yeah. I'd... Has a new carb on it. Could it be the jets allowing too much fuel? Can you change it? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can get, you can get different size jets, Roger. Rich Eastman says he doesn't have the notifications turned on. He just goes to the Golf Cart Garage channel and clicks the live tab. Okay. Number seven. What was number seven? Did I do that one? Yes. So we're on number eight. Okay, this is from Amy. I have a 99 EasyGo TXT. I want to increase the speed on this cart so I can make it street legal. It's a 36 volt cart currently. What are my best and cost effective options here? I've been looking at the Navitas 3.0 motor and controller speed and torque package. Is this what I would need or are there other options? I've put a six inch lift and increased the tire height. What kind of increased performance could I expect from the Navitas? Thank you for any advice you can offer me. Uh, that's a very good start. You need torque, and I'm glad you're going. See, I, I don't like it when people put big, tall tires and then they put speed motors on it. You know, but the fact that you're looking at something that has a, a speed and torque involved—that's what you want. You want both because you're you're making it a you're making it put a bigger strain on your electrical system. So you need a, a motor that is designed for torque, and that Navitas controller, very good. Uh, the the motor apparently is a is a got some torque associated with it because it says speed and torque package is 4.45 horsepower uh, yep that would that's a good start a very good start Roger the jets in the in the carburetor once you get it off and you remove the jet, there's going to be a number on the side of that jet, believe it or not. Even as small as it is, you can look at the number on the side of it. And uh, you're just going to get something bigger. Or, or I'm sorry, smaller. You know, you got to get something smaller than whatever is in there. I don't know exactly what's in there, especially since you put a new carburetor on. MJ Dunn, do not go too lean on those jets. It will run great, but not for long. Learn how to read your spark plugs. Yeah, Jeffrey says, look at your spark plugs, and, and they're supposed to burn brown, you know, a brown and white, brown and white mixture, like a tan color would be the ultimate place. Okay. I forgot to turn the question off. Ethanol free, uh, all small engines. Yeah, I do that too, helpless. On boats and motorcycles, it's, I always get it ethanol free. Even my, even my weed eater. Plug inspection is the first step. Easy Mike to you. Yeah, look at, that, look at your plugs. Uh, well, I'm assuming you already know they're burning black. Next heat range up on the plug might help with fouling. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Jeffrey says tan, no, no white would be perfect. All right, that's cool. Bauman's Custom Carts on Facebook. What's going on, Bauman's Custom Carts? Looking forward to watching the episodes. Going to subscribe as well. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Tina Wilson. What's going on, Tina Wilson? I have an easy go. When I have it on the charger, it charges, but when I go to back it out, it seems like I'm losing battery or something. Well, you, it could be. Uh, the, the, when a battery, see a golf cart's gotta have all six batteries good, or all four, depending on, on, on what configuration you have. All of them have to be good. If you have one cell and one battery that is bad, then 
it's going to it's not going to run right and it's going to feel like you're you're just losing power even if just one cell is bad so this is where a handheld voltmeter comes in handy when you you drive the car i think you probably you've been in here long enough tina you've probably heard me say something about putting a voltmeter leads on a battery and actually driving the cart and watching the voltmeter and see what happens. Do that to each one of your batteries and see if you have one battery that's dropping out further than the others. And that's what, that's what you're looking for because it uh, sounds like that might be what's going on there. Check your muffler that can make it run rich if carboned up. Okay. Number nine is where we're at on the regular questions. This is from Jack. I'm thinking about converting to lithium. I have a 2010 refurb EasyGo RXV cart used for golf primarily looking to go to the new Trojan 3 battery 48 volt system. Will I get a few more miles an hour out of my cart? Just curious. Uh, this, there's a question that comes up a lot and that's the, the name of this episode is was do lithium batteries make the cart faster? All right. Now it's, it's difficult to answer that question because technically no. The answer is no. If you're sticking with the same voltage pack, if it does make the cart faster, then it could just be a consequence of the fact that your battery pack was bad or was weak to begin with. Because if it was, you would have to compare a brand new lithium conversion to a brand new lead acid pack. And if that was the case, if there was a slight difference in speed with the lithium, it's only going to be because that lithium has slightly higher voltage and your power to weight ratio is dramatically different now. So if you did get a few miles an hour out of it, it would strictly be because your cart lost 300 pounds. It's not because you went to lithium. Uh, it's not just because you went to lithium. You, you, you traded, you got rid of a, of a bad lead acid pack or a weak lead acid pack and you put in a brand new lithium, it's not really a fair comparison. A, you know, a fair comparison would be a brand new lead acid pack against a brand new lithium as far as flat out speed. Now, will your cart feel like it's faster? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's gonna feel like it's way faster, but it's not actually, probably not actually faster on the top end and clock it. You know, there's free speedometer apps you can put on your smartphone and get a good reading on your cart, flat ground speed, to get a flat ground speed reading before you do the lithium conversion and do a flat ground speed reading after. Now, uh, now from here to the wall, like 60 foot time, it's going to be way quicker. Now, there's a difference between speed and quick. You know, it's going to feel more powerful, but it's not necessarily going to be that much faster. It might just be a little bit faster. The only way to make it a lot faster would be to go to a whole different voltage and do another voltage conversion on it. Okay. Roger says, thanks everybody. Paul Fortune. What's going on, Paul Fortune? Like the old joke, like sticking a potato in your buddy's tailpipe. If cannot exhale. So long story short, if it goes faster. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, the short answer is no, you don't expect it to go faster. Don't expect it to go faster just by changing the lithium. If that's the only change you made, don't expect it to be faster just by going to lithium. That would be the, the short answer. <laughs> Number 10, this is the last scheduled question. I have a, from Jim, I have an EasyGo TXT 48 volt cart, my batteries are toast. I'm looking at alternatives, Arizona for six months a year. Lead acid do not last long in the summer. Uh, guarantees are maybe two years. I understand that I could convert to lithium. I could maybe get away with 48 volt, 30 to 50 amp hour as I only use the cart in our RV park. 
I've read that some, that one battery could give me 20 to 25 miles, which is more than sufficient. Do you sell battery kits and could I do the installation myself? Can the age of the cart cause a problem? Any help would be appreciated. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's no problem. Yeah, you, you can do the installation yourself. And if your golf cart is completely stocked, I mean, it's not lifted with taller tires. If it's completely stocked, then you can go with the lesser expensive lithium pack conversion. And you can go with eco batteries. We have eco batteries. In fact, they're at golfcartgarage.com right now. Eco batteries are 10% off. They are 10% off. That's already factored into the price. You don't even have to have a coupon code or anything. They're 10% off at Golf Cart Garage. So if you want to look at 36 volt, I'm, I'm just assuming your car's 36 volt. Maybe it's not, but uh, you, you're welcome to do that. I had a snowmobile that wouldn't run. Turns out the mice had filled the exhaust with dog food. It couldn't breathe. There you go. That's a possibility. All right. Remember to follow us on Facebook and YouTube, but you can also follow us on other platforms. I'm running the, uh, the links to the other ones right there. There's other social media platforms. We are all over the place, so you can pick and choose one you want or more, multiple ones, but give us a like and a subscribe and a comment on YouTube and Facebook. Let me see what else we got here. If you would like to purchase a hat at golfcartgarage.com, you are welcome to. There are hot links in the description that take you right to them. Here are the hats that you can purchase. Bam! Right there across the screen. You can pick your color, but we are giving one away for free today. We are giving away a bag of swag here in just a few minutes. Uh, I'm sure that my assistant has already shut down the contest. I don't know if it's okay, uh, Catherine, or not. If you can, put Robert Lattimore in the, uh, in the drawing. He just typed in something there if you can put him in there if you haven't drawn already because we usually shut it down about question nine ricky hall says using the live tab did the trick watching on a tv all right ricky that's cool yeah that's what big mike does he's got a big tv in his garage like that one and he he watches it on there sherry king thanks for all your information you're welcome sherry king thank you for showing up uh I don't know if you can put Sherry King in the drawing or not, Catherine, if it's too late or not, but we're going to be giving one away here soon. Uh, Tim, does lead acid batteries have any benefits over lithium? Well, we've talked about this before, DMX, several times. There's a pro and a con list usually for everything. You know, for anything that you compare, there's usually a pro and a con list. But for lithium, the only con the only con for lithium is going to be cost. I can't think of another con for lithium. Now, the only thing that could possibly be is that, you know, lithium is able to be charged up a little bit higher voltage than a lead acid pack. And some controllers, or all controllers, are voltage sensitive. They, they only have a certain range of voltage that they can operate in. And if you're pushing the envelope, you know, it would have to, you'd have to really be pushing the envelope on the voltage, you know, to, to hurt controllers. I've heard people that are worried about that. I haven't really talked to people with that is happening to them, that they're burning out controllers because their lithium pack has too high of a voltage. I haven't talked to customers that that is happening to, but so far that's not even a con. So I, I don't see, uh, I don't see lead acid having any benefits over, over lithium at this point. Tommy Ramshore. How many rewire uh, Robert uh, Lattimore? How many rewire an older Yamaha cart between the charger port and the batteries? Do you recommend putting a fuse? If so, what size fuse would be good? I've read some people say you need one. You don't really need one there, Robert. That would be up to use. But I, uh, Alltrax uses a 250 amp fuse. Uh, I can. Th they they usually send that out uh, with every controller that they that they uh, that you buy a 250 amp fuse. 
just upfront cost is the only downside to lithium, but you get a lot more charge cycles with lithium, yeah. Well, yeah, if you wanted to say any advantage that lead acid would have over lithium, it would be a lesser expensive cost, you know, you know lesser expensive upfront uh, money or less expensive upfront money. Keith uh, from Palmetto, Florida, checking in. What's going on, Keith? Got Larry LaCucaracha. Larry LaCucaracha. What's going on, Larry LaCucaracha? That's, my, that's the name of the day, Larry LaCucaracha. <laughs> All right, let me see here. We, uh, coupon. If you'd like to contact us with Golf Cart Garage for any reason, you are welcome to. This is the this is the uh, email address on the front page. Support at golfcartgarage.com. There's the phone number to golfcartgarage.com. If you'd like to give us a suggestion on something that we could be doing different, something that we could do, uh, some products that we could carry, anything like that, feel free to. Let's see some cars. How about that? Let's see. Golf saws, sleds, carbon jets, hitting rocks, and closing the tailpipe besides carb problems. Uh, Harry Pike, where I am from, six eight volts are now thirteen hundred dollars. Makes lithium more desirable. Yeah, that's true. Uh, lithium is expensive, but lead acid is has been going up. I used to be able to, well, I don't want to say that, it makes me show my age, but I used to be able to do battery jobs for around 500 bucks. Whole battery jobs, lead acid battery jobs, labor and everything, and I was fine with it. Uh, can't do that anymore. Okay, we did the let's see graphic, didn't we? Yep, we're gonna do it again just because I like it. Let's see some carts. <laughs> this, uh, this cart is from Bruce. Yeah, last week, uh, last episode, I, I showed some pictures of an example of hydro dipping that I did for a customer. I did a camo cart. I showed the, the hydro dipped camo body. Well, Bruce apparently does some of the same stuff with some golf carts, and he sent me some pictures. Here is one. This is a, this is a Bentelli, you know, which is one of the, the newer brands of golf carts. Really, really nice cars. This is the before picture. This is a Bentelli white body you know very nice cart very nice street legal cart comes with all kinds of bells and whistles you know they're all they're sharp as they can be right out of the gate you know so this is the before picture let's see there's the tear down of the body to to go to uh to get ready to get the body hydro dipped And then here's the after picture. Bam! And see, they even did the top. You got all this done red, white, and blue. And, and you remember the seats were black and white. Now they're all solid black. Got red, white, and blue hydro dip. I'm telling you, that stuff is, when, it, when it's done right, it is, it is literally, it's just flawless. And you can get as the endless number of patterns you know, you can, you can have it done in endless number. You, anything you can think of that they probably already have a pattern for it. The U.S. has uh, outlawed lead. That's why lead batteries cost so much. I think that name gives fish breath a run for the money. Yeah, yeah it does, doesn't it, Craig? <laughs> Larry La Cucaracha. Yeah. Put your out. Greg Elliott, I love freedom. Yep, see that's cool. And I and I bet it even if you get up close, I mean if it's anything like that camo, and I'm sure that it is, uh, it is completely flawless. Thank you, Bruce. If you're still in here, are you? Thank you for sending me those. Anybody else want to send me some pictures to get their golf cart featured? You feel feel free to. You can either send it to that support email or you can send it to 00timfreeman at gmail.com. Either way, I will get it. Uh, by the way, Swag Winner has been announced. Swag Winner has been announced. I hope they're still in the room. Let me go over here and see. 
Bruce says it's perfect with the hydro dipping. Yep. Thank you, Bruce, for sending me those. Looks great. TV, yeah, I got it. All right. Tim from Palmetto checking in. Chris Bukowski, this is about my third video I've seen live. Do you mainly do mechanical videos or do you do some cosmetic videos like seats, accessories, etc.? Well, Chris, it's gotten to the point where we, we kind of just go with the flow of the room, you know, just depending on if somebody comes in with a question, uh, if I have something in my shop that I can use to ex explain or help explain, I will. If someone else is in the room that has experience with that particular question, they, we, we will. We sort of all kind of help each other at this point. So I never know what direction we're going to go in, you know, so it's, uh, it's just up to the questions. Okay, swag winner for this week is... Swag winner for this week, Tina Wilson. Tina Wilson on Facebook. You still with me, Tina? Let me know on, uh, on Facebook if you're still with me, Tina. Because I will be calling you personally to ask you some top secret security information. And then we will be sending you out a bag of swag which will include a hat and some little trinkets that Dave puts in there. Uh, Tina, there's my email address. Uh, Kath see that where Catherine posted my email address there right above where you just posted? Congratulations to Tina Wilson. If you will send me your contact information to that email address, Tina, and I will call you if you're not busy uh, in a little bit after we get off of this episode, after we close this episode down because you just legitimately won a random drawing of a bag of swag, and I appreciate you showing up here every week, or occasionally. I know I've seen you in here several times. So thank you very much. Send me, send me an email to that email address that's right above your last comment on Facebook, and I will give you a call and get your, get your shipping information, and we'll get that sent out to you. Thank you for being a part of my show, Tina. Okay, let's see, I got the, we talked about the, the lithium, we did the social, we did the hats, we did a coupon, we showed the contact, uh, we showed Bruce, Bruce's pictures, uh, I told you that Eco is 10% off at golfcartgarage.com. Also, at golfcartgarage.com, if you spend, you'll see this on the home page if you go there, if you spend over $2,099, you get a Amazon gift card worth 100 bucks. You get an Amazon gift card if you spend over $2,099. That could be on, you know, that'd be pretty easy to do nowadays, especially when we we're talking about price of batteries. I mean, we do sell batteries. You can buy batteries from us at golfcartgarage.com, and you easily could spend more than that by the time you got your everything you needed. So, and you get a $100 Amazon gift card you can use anywhere you'd like. All right. Congratulations again to Tina. Kurt says, congratulations, Tina. We are now both suited up. Greg Elliott, 50 viewers and 31 likes. Harry Fike, thumbs up to Tina. Ricky, yeah, I, I just haven't looked for that setting. I'm sure you're correct. There's, even Kurt told me that before. I just haven't. Every time I think about it, I, I think about something else. It's, but, I, yeah, I need to check that out because it does keep doing that to me. Larry LaCucaracha just got an Eco 51. It's definitely a game changer, especially with the Navitas AC system. That's cool. That's cool, Larry. Yeah, your power to weight ratio when you go lithium is off the chart, and that's going to make your car feel like a real beast. Okay. Still eight-year warranty on your lithiums, yep. 
All right, we did the eco. Yeah, it'll give you all the details about the uh, two thousand ninety nine dollar order in the Amazon gift card, hundred dollar Amazon gift card. It gives you all the, the details on the when you go to golfcartgarage.com. You get on the first page. All right, so we get. Well, I think we're done for the day, guys. Just right in, right on time. We still should send you pictures with our hats on, Jeff. Yeah, do that if, if you would like. I'll feature those. To send, send me pic, not only of, like, in, when you, if you want to send me pictures, it doesn't have to be of a golf cart. It can be golf cart related. Well, you sitting in your golf cart with your golf cart garage hat on is golf cart related. So yeah, anybody that wants to send me a picture of themselves wearing the hat and uh, in their golf cart or, or or wherever they'd like, that is fine, and I will feature those. Joe Foster says, bam. This is what I usually say bam for when I go like this right here. Bam. <laughs> Happy spring, everyone. See y'all next week. And how's the email spelling for sending pics? Email spelled zero zero Tim Freeman, F R E E M A N, at gmail.com. MJ Dunn. All right, guys. Thank everyone for coming today. Thank, uh, congratulations, Tina Wilson, again on your on your hat. I will be giving you a call here shortly, whenever I close everything down. I will see everybody on next Tuesday. Yep, next Tuesday, next Taco Tuesday. Coupon. Thank you, Kurt. I didn't do a coupon, did I? Get 5% off any parts you order at golfcartgarage.com if you use coupon code TIM19, TIM19. This code expires on April the 4th, four days before the eclipse. Eclipse is on April the 8th. Get 5% off any parts you order. TIM19. Thank you, Kurt. I appreciate it. We'll see you all later. The garage is now closed. <laughs>